and we are live today. I am here with team rider Jack Napek. What's up, everyone? Welcome, everybody, to the 16th episode of the Free Skates Podcast. Today, as the title says, we will be talking about cross-training and how that relates to free skating. Um, it can be a number of sports from snowboarding all the way to, like, you know, fighting sports like jujitsu. Um, yeah, that's what we'll be talking about today. So Jack actually has some experience with many sports. That's something that I personally don't have. I only know how to free skate. Um, but what what else are you into uh, besides free skating? Yeah, so I like to just kind of categorize it as like sideways sports. So like mm. snowboarding, uh, wakeboarding, wake surfing for the most part. I guess those are like the top three. But it's really cool how free skating can apply to like a wide array of sports beyond that too. Mm. So there's a lot to talk about there. Cool. So um, I guess I'll ask, what is the sport that you think free skating has translated back to the most? Like, so you're on the free skates and then you come back to the sport and you're like, wow, I can do all these different things now. So this is where it's going to kind of be different for everyone because I do live in a state where I got four seasons. So I've been snowboarding for 15 years. So for me personally, I would say snowboarding, but that's just because mm-hmm. I consistently do it year round. And uh, it goes hand in hand. Like when summer comes around, you go free skate. And then when winter comes around, you hop back on the board. And it's like you've never left a snowboard or mm-hmm. vice versa. If you like free skating more, you can snowboard a little bit. And it's like you never left the free skates. Or, I mean, you can go to indoor parks and stuff to maintain that too, but. Um, and would you say the free skates have applied to snowboarding in any specific yes. way? Like what are the skills so, that it's allowed so to bring back? This is where it kind of gets really cool. So I'm back. Oh, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, or I'm Jeff here did. for the first time. I was Jeff milling on the stream. Yeah. Now we have, um, we have What's Jeff up? milling. Uh, what's up, Jeff? <laughs> hey, hey, Jeff. So, I was uh, having technical difficulties, okay. but yeah, don't let me interrupt. Go cool, ahead. I was just going to tell you what we were talking about. Um, so I was talking about how snowboarding has actually improved my riding as a snowboarder. Or and free skating has improved your or, ride yeah, as sorry. a snowboarder. Okay. Uh, free cool. skating has improved my riding as a snowboarder. And I should add that my riding almost had come to a halt or my progression had kind of stopped at a, at a certain point in snowboarding at like around the 10 year mark. And I'm at like 15 now. So it just says something when you start to progress again, you know, like. Uh, Mm. when I started to learn switch, uh, on my free skates, it, it's not that I hadn't known switch on a snowboard, but free skates had taught me individual ankle motions that really can be implemented into carving styles that you typically aren't that good at. If you know how to ride switch already on a snowboard that can drastically improve your abilities while switch. Mm. And then just kind of having switch unlocked at that more advanced level on a snowboard really allowed me to have a lot more fun and i feel like that's one of the bigger takeaways that i'm like happy about with free skating is like it it really like helps you progress in ways that you just never even thought would affect other sports and you're like I don't know. They just go hand in hand. So, so you know, what's uh, weird is that you know, like snowboarding, you don't do as much ankle stuff. Like your ankles are literally locked oh, in there. That, but yeah. And so that's why you can't really progress in a, in a, in a sense of like control uh, that you do on free skate. So that's what the, the benefits of hopping from one to the other is, is like, you can bring that muscle memory to the snowboard, but like, it's not quite like free skating, but it can be, it can get styled it can, you can style it up kind of like free skating like super fast carve or like just unique carving styles well also uh, the thing about free skating is my, uh, the famous thing that people say is it builds muscles that you didn't know you had so my assumption is that those muscles that you wouldn't have worked out yeah. otherwise might apply to your ability to they're, carve and maneuver yeah on they're more part as well. they're more coordinated they're well they're better they're stronger so they're just stronger muscles uh because you're working them and uh I was gonna say something. Something goes along with that. Um, well, yeah, you've tried the the dual snowboards as well, haven't you? Yeah. So I just tried those the other week, and how were they? 
they were a very interesting time. Uh, having 15 years of snowboarding and eight years of free skating definitely helped on my first day of dual snowboarding. So it's not like your typical like first time user experience. Is it quite what do you expect? Does it feel like you're free skating on snow or not really? So no, it oh, doesn't man. feel like necessarily free skating. There's not really so much pumping. It's more of a a, a gliding down the hill, kind of like snowboarding. But there is a a, a carving technique to it that you uh, that you do uh, gain from free skating. Mm. But it's not necessarily like pumping or anything like that. It's more of a it's a snowboard flow. Like it's probably also different than regular snowboarding because I know oh, like yeah. regular snowboarding uh, revolves or like uh, relies on like the arch of a snowboard. Like yeah, the, uh, continuous, you, the continuous board. Yeah, yeah. So when you put weight on your snowboard, it like it forms that arch. Yeah. So you have to form it. You have to. You, it's like individual foot place, or both of them have to be at the same Me angle. While you're turning toes. It's double toe side, double heel side, double toe side, uh -huh. double heel side. And there are ways to do toe side, heel side, heel side, toe side to make a carving, but it's oh. just not quite like free landing I would, or free skating, I would say. That's interesting because I guess I'm just only now realizing the snowboarding, the dual snowboarding turning technique would be entirely different. It would actually be toe heel rather than, rather than the pivoting, right? Or is it pivoting? Uh, it is a little it's bit right. of both. It is okay. a little bit of both because you do have to slot. You do still have to like slot if you're. I mean, and that's kind of more for just like carving style. And I think I I uh, I DM Jeff saying like it's more of like free skate style snowboarding. Like it's not like I don't know. It's not exactly free skating. It's not exactly snowboarding. It's just like a weird mix of them both. And mm -hmm. uh, another idea I had about those was like. So they're not, or they're they're attached to your feet because you have bindings, right? But um, I was thinking, like, that'd be cool if you could do. So in snowboarding, we have these things called stomp pads that you put in the middle of your board. So when you get on a chairlift, you take your back foot off, and when you get off the chairlift, you can. Uh, that stomp pad allows you to have something to put your foot on that's not mm -hmm. your binding, so that mm -hmm. you don't fall over. And I was thinking you could put two of those stomp pads on each dual board. And then just have snowboards and that would maybe allow you to do flat ground tricks obviously you probably couldn't carve down a mountain like that wait but... so you're saying replace the bindings replace with the, the bindings pad. with just stomp pads just for like flat ground tricks obviously and you would obviously need like a leash because you would lose them all the time <laughs> Fly but then you wouldn't be able to pick no. them up like toe side would not be possible See, that's what i was i was about to elaborate with that so i was saying like my idea there wasn't to ride them ride down the hill with it it's more to get like a flat ground clip like to showcase yo i know how to do a throwback on free skates and i can bring it to the mountain maybe it, I don't know. I wouldn't. You. It'd be like a super. It's a niche. gimmick. Yeah, it's yeah. a super niche niche use. But mm -hmm. like someone who has eight years of free skating experience, kind of. Uh, that's just the way I thought about it. I was like, I kind of want to try that. But someone I, who's I interested like, in interested in in trying things that like almost no one else does. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. So, so Jeff, I'm interested in seeing if there's any. Yo, what up, Odwin? Sarah, in the chat. Welcome to the stream. Welcome. Um, what are I'm you interested, interested in? in knowing if there's any um, cross sport uh, benefits that Jeff has experienced with free skating or anything relating to that. Well, definitely all sorts of other wheeled uh, devices. Like I had never roller skated prior to you know being a decently experienced free skater, and then hopping on the roller skates. Um, there's like a lot of balance that, you know, sort of comes from free skating that is independent of, of the direction of motion. Like, I feel like if you're a roller skater, like you're used to balancing, um, straight, right. You literally can't, oh crap, sorry. Steam <laughs> is turning on. Um, oh, no. yeah, I know. I just turned on my computer. So like every program is launching. I hate that when Dang. it does that um so roller skaters going forward motion right you're stuck in that angle right yeah. but free skaters you have to learn to deal with different angles because sometimes you're going to land a trick at a different angle or sometimes you're going to even intentionally position your foot at a different angle etc cetera, etc cetera. so then our intuition becomes a little more um you know independent of angle so if you wanted to apply that to roller skating 
you know, it's basically a subset of free skating at that point. I mean, it's totally. obviously the balance definitely different. transfers mm -hmm. in some way. Maybe not the way you would hope it would. Like you could, you're definitely a little wobbly first time if you've never done it. Like I was. Like all of our friends roller skate, right? So living in San Diego is only a matter of time until you're gonna pick up a pair of roller skates. Um, it did take me less than less than a week to be comfortable, like going around a rink and stuff. I don't know any maneuvers, but I feel like coming from people watching me learn over that week, everyone kept telling me like, you're progressing so quickly. Like, how do you already know how to side surf this and that? And the answer to that is free skating. My natural thing, uh, first trick to learn in roller skating is side surfing because that's the closest like maneuvering kind of, because you can pump like free skates. It's toes in, toes out. It just feels awkward as heck because you're in that spread yeah. position. That, that's a turnaround position yeah it's it's yeah, like a turn around right so if you know how to turn around and you have that but much you're not a huge turnaround maybe uh, you can side serve i would so all to say i would argue that my ability to free skate um for about four years at that point when i decided to learn roller skates um really translated to just being able to learn more quickly now i wish i kept at it more because i'd be far more capable of maybe a couple more things, but cube of cheese is in the chat. Outside skill and technique lessons you get from cross training. There's also balancing out of muscle development. I don't that that's not like a full sentence there, cube of cheese. You should maybe, <laughs> but anyway, I think I get what you're trying to say. Yeah, no, a general <laughs> balance is totally improved. Oh yeah, oh yeah. From like I don't know, falling in the shower to like literally oh, anything, like catching yourself on one leg, like you're about to trip and you catch yourself, mm. like oh um. Slacklining, that's a big one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, on free skating, if you're very sketchily landing a trick, sometimes what you do is you just like really quickly bend your knees and get down super low because that lowers your center of, uh, yes. it, that lowers your you know center of mass and it helps you compensate. And on slacklining, um, that's a very similar thing. Like if you're about to lose balance, you just bend your knees real quick, get low. Would you know. say Jack, have you tried slacklining? I have. But not not to the extent like not more than like five or so times. So not to the extent where I could like give a good like, yeah. example. But I, I have an understanding of that. Like, what about you, Gabe? Um, slacklining. I tried briefly over at Liberty Station. A bunch of people were trying it. Um, mm, I wasn't right. the greatest at it, but like I had also never been on it, and I stayed up for like uh, like on the line for longer than I had anticipated. But my, my question would be, um, would you say all these examples translate going the other direction, say slacklining the free skating or, you know, mm. roller skating the free skating? Would they apply in similar ways, like bending your knees on a slack line, bending? It's certainly in some instance, but okay. um, I mean, like there, there are other instances of them uh, affecting negatively because of, okay. of like, for instance, rollers, uh, skateboarders trying to lean the free skates because their brain is so uh, programmed to um, if they lean, lean their they skateboard win. that, yeah, they have to fight that, that skill. And that's like that the opposite true. of cross training. <laughs> that is kind of true. You almost have to break, yeah, break a habit at that point. Yeah. James um, says that he started one wheeling and free skating at the same time. Definitely help front back foot weight distribution and switch riding by cross training between the two. Awesome. That's sick. Yeah. yeah, I think James one wheeled while he was here with us. Oh yeah, I believe he's oh, a yeah. a very solid free skater. So I would not be surprised that you know it's kind of like once you learn free skating, you have that superset of uh, of balance yeah. ability. I like overall, the flow and uh, balance on any sideways thing you do after you know how to free skate it should always like improve or just be more fun it's uh i don't know what's going on. you got this i wonder which emoji that is yeah i don't know i wonder if it shows up in youtube but not probably in this interface just got them skates Ooh, That's awesome. um i could just got free them. skates marvin Nice. I've snowboarded 250 days and own an electric unicycle. Yeah, you see. The skates are quite a challenge, but managed to get a 10 foot today after 10 after 20 minutes. minutes. 20 oh, minutes. 20 wow. minutes. I can't That's read. not bad. That's not bad. You know, just keep uh, paying attention to the little progress and 
and enjoy it. That's yeah. awesome. Man. And the grand scheme of things, 20 minutes is nothing. So it looks like you're already on a, uh, a oh. great track there. Oh, I've been corrected. Let's see. I feel compelled to note that which is was indeed a full sentence. And of the general Outside format. of X, there's <laughs> also Y. Okay, let's look at this. Outside of the skill and technique you get from cross training. Hmm. There's also balancing out of muscle development. There's also balancing. Out. Does that? I think he means like in the form of muscle development, or I I get what he's saying. Yeah, I think it's the out of muscle development. Balancing out of muscle development doesn't really make sense. But yeah, the, in general, it is a full sentence. Jacob, def <laughs> Jacob defended you, Cuban cheese. I was talking about not overworking your muscles. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes, for sure. Not talking about literal balance. Um, balancing. Okay. It's just like muscle memory or something like that. Learning, learning via muscle memory. Marvin got free skates a few days ago. Welcome to the free skate family. My back foot is drifting away. Front foot is fine. Is it drifting backwards or is it drifting forwards? Because if it's drifting backwards and you're going this way, grammar police. Mew, mew. If it's drifting backwards, you need to do toe out, which brings it forward. If it's drifting forwards, Toe in brings it backwards. Mm. Yes, pivot it. If if you if it drifts even farther, pivot it the other way. Drifting behind. Okay. So yeah, on toe, which... toes out. So these are your toes. Toes out. Well, do we know which position they are? Like which? Google it actually are. doesn't matter. Believe it or not. Yeah. yeah. So if you're moving this way and it's backwards. Oh, right. Toes out. But if you're moving this way and it's backwards, it's toes out. Behind. It does the same thing. Yes. Yes. Toe out. Toe out is the way. Toe out is the way. What were you going to say, Jack? You were going to say something. I was going to get it uh, get back to cross training and how I kind of find it like super beneficial in a state that has four seasons. Mm. Um, so mm. I was just going to talk about how the consistent progress throughout the year is kind of a really cool thing to be able to like still do as a, as a person that lives in four changing seasons. Like, Typically, mm -hmm. I don't know if you don't if you don't have free skating or if you don't do skateboarding, like, and you're a snowboarder, you'll miss out on like the whole summer if you don't uh, do anything. So it's like a really big opportunity to like keep up with your skill set and not lose any of that muscle memory that you've been working at. So I think that's one of the more like important things when I think of like, oh, why is cross training so cool to me, or why do I like it so much within free skating and snowboarding, and it's like. That's like one of the core reasons for me is like. So you're saying like snowboarding during the winter helps you keep up your skills. It helps hmm. me maintain when he couldn't otherwise when he I, couldn't otherwise. Skate. Yeah, when I couldn't otherwise free skate or like maintain skate. muscle. Yep, muscle yeah. mass and uh, muscle memory. Really? Yeah. Like, memory. like, do you think that you progressed uh, in your free skating ability by snowboarding? Uh, I don't know necessarily about progressed but 100% maintain and uh, just, yeah, it cool. maintain, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a random question from Snow Lights. How far do you think someone could send a ramp? I was watching 2019 Thrasher Halloween video and was wondering, could you jump massive gaps and do very cool, do very, very tricks on free skates? Grammar police. Take it away, Gabe. Well, I think we all know. Um, or is he pulling up a video or something? Uh, I was just pulling up the grammar, please. Um, so I'm trying to I'm trying to interpret. I'm not familiar with the Thrasher Halloween video. Um, I mean, Mass Matt can in general. Jump. I would have to see that, but Matt can jump pretty. Matty can jump pretty big ramps, like, um, and like early grab and stuff, and yeah. has done has he done gaps not like mega ramp style but like but he has done like gaps where like there's a gap in the in the bowl and he'll like jump from one side mm -hmm. to another um uh, definitely not as rider, isamu who's done launching out of a bowl into the next bowl early grab um but yeah but maybe more specific oh 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 vert tricks he said vert tricks he corrected um so in that case 
Maybe Isamu has done vert, but I don't know about too many vert tricks on coping or anything. I don't think I've seen any. I'm sure. Maybe. I mean, it's definitely possible. That's the thing with free skating is that it's still, you know, developing oh, yeah. quite still a bit. Developing. So uh, it's, it's su super possible. Marvin says, I was a pro juggler for many years. Excited to combine free skates with juggling. I want to do patterns with three skates as I saw June did. Oh, June, yeah, June did the, the three skate. Mm. <laughs> Jeff is a little offended, Marvin, <laughs> that you didn't put Jeff's name there. You said you put June. Did uh, June juggle? I, I, have I, has June done a juggling? I think, I think what, she, what he's talking about might be when she does, she'll throw a skate down and kick flip it and then land on another one and then throw another one down, maybe. Like she's uh, holding There it. is a very specific clip I'm thinking of. If I could find Which, it, I don't think necessarily that's juggling in terms of what Jeff does. That's more like yeah. playing around with more so, than one set of skates. But so Marvin, she was riding three skates. Okay, yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. Is yeah, uh, there's the, the juggling trick, which is you have yeah, three skates and I don't think you always keep talking. one in in motion, like uh, whether or not it's arcing or or yeah. I think she may have done that, but on flat. Was she, did she do that, but with flat wheels? Well, because there is this sort of thing. If you, can you see the screen right now? Yes, I think this. Is... Um, like dealing oh, with there multiple we go. Yeah, one, two, three. Kind of like this right here, right. and then nice. You know what I mean? Okay, so she has done a little bit of things, but will you pull up um, the juggling vid uh, of the, of you in Tokyo? Yeah, just to demonstrate. Uh, yeah. Might have to scroll on JMK for a good second here. Actually, it could be on my profile. It's I think it's on my profile too. Can we beat Jeff? You can do I a mean, bunch of juggling patterns with three. It's somewhere. In general, jugglers do very well with free skating because you're used to uh, the time it takes uh, to practice and put put time into things. Um, I'm looking for it, and I'm about to give up in three, two, one. Okay. Come on, the video is somewhere, but Jeff can juggle on free skates. It is very satisfying when you play with, like, four. I haven't juggled for probably more than, like, That's the one three she's, or yeah. four catches, but when you do it repeti as repetitively as Jeff does... It's pretty entertaining clip. Why won't Instagram Instagram won't let you view posts without logging in? That's so annoying. Okay. Um, but I was saying jugglers do well on free skates. Uh, we have a, a, a local here in San Diego, Clark, who is a huge juggler and oh, yeah. uh, has been doing pretty great on free skates because you you know you understand that the time that it takes so much time. So in a way, juggling and free skating are also cross training. That like is mental. That's a good mental point too. Like there's a dude that uh, we still need to hit up. We ran into a kid. He was probably around nine, ten years old on the boardwalk, and he was very determined to get the free skates down, and he would not stop trying them. We were trying to leave for our Friday skate, so his dad was like, "Do you want me to give you his Instagram?" I'm like, "Why does this little kid have an Instagram?" So I pull it up, and he has 100k. He's like the youngest person to do a double backflip on BMX. So like, um, you know, oh. the kid is really good at something and has tried so hard at something else where, you know, he's also determined to get this other thing that for some reason he can't do. So, when did that happen? Um, that happened uh, at a Friday skate, I'd say a month and a half to two months ago. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's uh, surprising. So... I was like, oh, well, I, and then I took the dad's hand. I'm like, very nice to meet you. Did you give him our, our info and stuff? Yes. I, as I carry, like, hey, here's, here's the Instagram. This is the mm -hmm. address of shop. Stop by. And he said he would. So, you know, and he's local San Diegan, but it, that just goes to show, I was like, oh, that's why he was so determined because he had the determination for that other thing. Obviously, he got so good at it. So, um, I'm assuming that's kind of in line with what you were saying, Jeff, of how, Mm -hmm. knowing what it takes to succeed at mm -hmm. something or build balance definitely helps.
I wonder how free skating would affect his BMX like abilities with like just having that total body control mm. after free skating kind of maybe. I wonder if it I would, would say maybe the BMX would translate into, into committing skating. for things. Maybe like yeah. Zachariah's skateboarding ability in the skate park would translate to committing to a trick rather than just giving giving up or giving out. Yeah. Uh, do you think free skating can ever make it into something like X Games? How do you envision the sport progressing? I'll leave Jeff to answer that one. Or Jack. Jack, uh, Jack has an answer to this one. I definitely think X Games is like the perfect spot to introduce uh, free really? skating initially. I didn't, would say. Didn't I mean, you whatever. say that you, you didn't see it in X Games, but you did see it in the Olympics? Oh, I for sure see it as an Olympic sport, but I feel like it's so like niche or like new in its own way that X Games could be like a cool premiere for it, I feel like. I don't know. Yeah. Or like a, you know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of tough to make it seem like the same, you know, X Games aesthetic, though. I mean, it's like you yeah, can only jump. Giant uh, ramp. You can yeah, only jump I, I off. the other part about free skating is all the tricks are so intricate and like, yeah, you have to almost be a free skater to appreciate them. And that's kind of what skateboarding was for the longest time. So I, it it will take time for people to even care to like be like, wow, that was a double free flip or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But in terms of like general riding, there are, I, I guess it, it can be hard to implement like flow that like is like digestible in terms of like competition and then right with a crowd as well. So, I mean, it, it'll take time for- I totally see uh, an Olympic, an Olympic uh, sport. You know, yeah. like like a figure skating style routine where you, yeah. you know, because they already did like the freestyle um, freestyle competitions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean PBT is basically a point. I mean, there's not the level of extreme tricks like right. you're getting height and yeah. all that stuff. That is a good point. Scootering isn't even next game. It's totally the thing it should be. I think it could be. Um, Marvin said, how long has free skating been around? Who are the ones that started making it to be a thing? How does JMK starting? How did JMK start becoming the main name for it? So basically the original free skating, free skating we company. Have a bunch of videos on this, but yeah. Yeah. Free line. So they, they started around 16 or so years ago and they had a good run for, you know, what was it? It must've been six or seven years or so. And then for one reason or another, that company died. So the reason JMK exists is to keep keep the sport moving. So because JMK was the one to, you know, bring the community back and bring everyone a quality set of skates and build this awesome community. Um, I mean, the, the, the main name is free skating. The main company bringing it to people right now today is JMK. So I feel, I feel like because of the JMK, because of the impact JMK has had over the last several years, that's why it is now um, the main name. Um, so, yeah, JMK has been around for five or six years. Freeline was based in San Francisco, right? Yeah. Well, that's Smart. like they were between San Francisco and San Diego. Okay. And then JMK was starting in San Diego. Uh, around 26 yeah and month. we have um a bunch of videos about that it's actually kind of cool we had a video with kiyoki a video you know with john mm. and then they were all podcast. talking about the history yeah as a podcast so if you go to the youtube uh, and you go to the podcast playlist on the free skates podcast channel um or the main channel um of jmk ride you will find some of the original ones give you a lot of this story free skating is very niche kind of like juggling hard for the masses to appreciate the in intricacies 100 percent it's probably why juggling isn't in the olympics <laughs> juggling to me is definitely something where it's like after a certain point i i just like my eyes blur over because it's like i don't understand how the balls are getting from you know here to there kind of thing um, mm -hmm. could be similar with free skating um okay so i actually um this person asked about June technically juggling. Yeah. Was June not juggling because the pathway of the skates weren't braided in any particular juggling pattern? I honestly still qualify it as juggling, but um, the juggling trick is this one that I just finally figured out how to log in. Um, so let me do that. Would you classify her video as like 
freestyle juggling then kind of in a way sort of so yeah this is um what i call what i what i think is like you know a juggling trick yeah, this is a i would say it's the think. same throw you know it's yeah. the same throw that i'm using to keep those three skates uh in motion the whole time and uh boy did an excellent job of filming this with his 360 oh camera. boy filmed that video yeah i did with not know who was behind the camera with this 360 camera yeah 360. Um, oh so that's how it was framed and everything yeah and that's how it's like kind of uh, clip. yeah the, that all makes sense now i didn't even know that i'm learning new things today giving them the juggles as they said the yeah camera. so june was technically juggling like juggling is any f way of keeping three things in the air pretty much so or just like you have a lot or, of homework or you have a lot of um, stuff to do at jmk you're juggling all these things or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um the social juggling but also the more contemporary approach yes what american regions have picked up free skating never knew they existed until i came down to school near tampa and i'm from the new england area I mean, yeah, Florida is a huge is a is a great spot. Like that's a spot where it's like the weather year round is conductive to skating sports in general. Mm. And as is Southern California, specifically San Diego and LA. LA. Mm -hmm. Um big skating scene. So like um big there idea. Yeah, there are definitely several skaters in New York as well. And then I wanna think there's one more. There's a few in the Bay Area. Um, there's like certain colleges. Iowa State for a good bit had some free skaters. That's where I came from. That's how I found them. Um, you know, it's kind of spread apart, but I've heard Jacob's of. A, oh, sorry. I've, I've heard of a group up in Duluth that actually used to uh, ride back when Freeline was a thing. So there still might be some people up in Minnesota that ride from back in the Freeline days. I've well, heard. you know, we're going to find out soon enough because the Free Skater Finder is yeah. very close. Free Skater Finder. Ear, ear. Hype. The hype is real. Oh, Everyone get excited. Wow. We're going to have a interface to go on and see where everyone is and see where the nearest Free Skaters are to you. To answer your question, Jacob, do you have to keep consciously keep track of the left and right skates when you do that? So the turnaround, fun, funnily enough, is always with my right skate because I'm goofy. And so I'm always throwing my right skate. So I basically have one left skate that I'm always riding and two right skates that I'm just psh, 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 tossing, um, keeping it, keeping active. But even if um, I use a, a random left skate in there, it all, it all it matters is when you look at the skate, you look at the wheels and then you put your foot relative to the wheels in the same angle. We have a video on that. It's called your free, your free skates are lying to you or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a big scene outside of the USA? Absolutely. Yes. Um, how can I best show you? I'm going to look up a video on um, TikTok of basically this will show you, give you an idea of what it's like in China. But if you uh, if you want to see longer videos, we do have a couple of videos. If you look up JMK Ride China. There's some longer videos of me talking about what the experience was like and um, maybe do that after the stream. Um, I'd recommend watching those on the JMK Ride channel. Yeah. I'm trying to find photos. Well, um, to answer your question, James, I am like really doing a lot of finalization at the moment. Um, so figuring out um, like deploying right now actually i'm testing um the the code changes that i made because um several of the things that i made for the free skater finder you know it has to tie into the ambassador site and our ambassadors have to be able to log into the free skater finder and stuff like that so basically i just kind of copied the ambassador finder ambassador um database down and started it up with the free skater finder and doing all sorts of sort of integration tests at the moment but um, very, very soon, I'm hoping by the end of the week, I will be getting ambassadors on there first. So, um, and then for the public release, it could be a couple more weeks here while I fight bugs. But yeah, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> nice. 
Um, here's a video that I could show on here if I figure out how to center the camera and then do this weird thing. Here's a video in China. Check out all these free skaters just stampeding down a street. Stampede of free skaters. <laughs> um, and that's just like a meetup, you know, like, I guess maybe that doesn't happen all the time, but there are far more free skaters in China than in anywhere else in the world. I think in a conversation with our buddy Chen, I was like, huh? how many free skaters um, like in your area? He was like, oh, yeah, like over a thousand something or other. And then I was like, you mean in China, right? He said, like, no, in my city. So I'm like, oh, OK. Wow. <laughs> so like there it's a bit bigger. I think a lot of that has to do with the different brands and different, uh, you know, patent laws and everything over there allowed for there to be brands left and right that are trying to make their own cheap versions of the skates. And when Freeline went out of business, um, it kind of died out in the U S whereas in China, it was still going strong with, you know, all these manufacturers and whatever that are, you know, trying to, you know, sell skates. So, I mean, it could also just be somehow it stuck with China more. I don't know the full story of them over there, but um, that's definitely the biggest community. And then Japan is pretty, pretty good too. I don't know if they're next on the list or if you would say that's more like Taiwan or South Korea or there's a lot of, there's a lot of hubs in Asia, I would say. Yeah. I Japan is, I feel like Japan is, is, Japan is next. second. Yeah. And then there's like hubs at different areas in the world. Like Barcelona has a team. Um, Sup, Rick. Welcome to hello, Rick. The stream. New York is also a big, uh, like a hub for for free skaters. There's like a decent number out there. I think we have two ambassadors in, in New York, but it's like it's a big enough place that we need like plenty of plenty of representation out there. Um, Marvin has another question. Oh, oops. Magic. Yeah. This is just the two you're holding down the whole state. There are like I <laughs> there's said, more. There's gotta be a there's couple definitely more. like OGs from the Freeland days. I've heard about it. Um my brother actually is uh works with um I think Ryan Farley's like one of Brian Farley's good buddies who I've skated with at Third Layer, a place that me and Steph and actually me and Gabe have skated skated there now, a YouTube video for JMK. Um but he's told me that there's people up in Duluth. So I know that there's more, but I don't know how active they are. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the OG OG freeliners uh, kind of don't go near it anymore. Unfortunately, how could you? How could you just give it up? Uh, I mean, that happened. Um, like that happens with like people who graduated from my college as well. They would free skate, um, and then when they graduate, they just like leave their skates and like you know let the you know there's the a next... box of free skates. <laughs> yeah, let the next generation of of people going to my school <laughs> it's I will say, like how could you do that <laughs> i will say though at, at the skate parks in minnesota i do have like five or six or so kids that'll just steal my skates so I, there's definitely kids that are intrigued by them in minnesota and i'm sure if you ride them in any state that would be the case so just get out there and ride and spread the stoke that's really what it's that's how we get get more free skaters out there in totally. the first place. yes uh san francisco is where ryan uh, the inventor initially came up with them to my knowledge uh does free skating style differ systematically uh from locale to locale or oh. is there variation between riders from between yeah i think i would say yes yeah there's, yeah, there, between there's China, um... Japan, barcelona than us there's there's a, there's visually a different style oh yeah oh yeah like, um, I feel like in the US, um, people have more of unique writing styles because we all kind of evolve separately. You know how like the Galapagos Islands works? That's basically the US. Everyone is evolving independently. Because we're all inspired by people, all these people that have already grown teams from different countries. And yeah, I, I mean, my quick... But in China, they have teams and they skate yeah. together more than they skate individually. So it results in like definitely a more shared uh, I would say, style. From what I've seen, and maybe I'm just, I have my eyes set on Team Survivor, which is China's like premier street free skating team. Um, 
they as a team are pretty aggressive skaters, I feel like. Everything is landed pretty aggressively, and the goal is to be like flashy and quick and like intense. Whereas people in Japan, I feel like, from what I've seen, are very beautiful and flowy with everything they do, and um, everything is like, fluid. I don't know, fluid, steezy. Not that the Chinese aren't steezy, but uh, there's definitely a difference in style there. And then, not even location, but if you're like an OG rider, like you can tell, like we, just the other day, I think yesterday we ran into an OG freeliner on the boardwalk and he was asking about Matty Tice and like how he's doing. And I was like, look, behind. <laughs> I was like, look behind you. And he like looked and then he had a moment of realization, like uh, you're Matty Tice. And then <laughs> like we that talked for a while and then we were like, wait a minute, what are you doing? Why aren't you getting on the JMKs trying them out? He hops on and, I don't know, but these people, you can kind of just tell they were skating back in the day of Freeline, and there was a specific OG riding style that not a lot of people have these days. Mm. Um, that, How would you uh, describe it? Hmm. How? I mean, I feel like you know what I'm talking about, right? Is it like when Maddie um, does the Ryan Pirelli? Oh, Pirelli. like move back and forth? Um, I, I guess. It I, seems I to be. Yeah, it's a little more like carving oriented. Carving oriented, like mm -hmm. back and forth, smooth. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. actually, so I, that's probably from the history of free skating is that it was originally invented as a downhill sport. Like it was invented mm. by, you know, downhill longboarders. Yeah. Totally depends on your influence and who you look up to. People do move out of their hobbies and passion. Thus is life. Yep, there, are, there are many things that I've since just left. Um, Computer behind. engineering. Computer engineering. <laughs> uh, music. Um, still a part of me, but like not nearly as much as other stuff. I'm sure people can relate. There are one-off things. Thankfully, free skating has not been that. Or it's going five years strong, so with no signs of slowing down. Team Zero focuses more on technical tricks. Yeah, me and Jack were just talking about how Team Zero is a great team in Hiroshima, Japan, and they are they have like a full-on school, which is wild. But their rooms are like a lot smaller than, say, some big flat area that you would find outside. So, because it's such a small area, you got to learn all these maneuvers and tricks in w within that constraint. So. Um, well, they actually recently constructed a, a large outdoor area for them. And they have they now have a large outdoor yeah. area. Yeah, and well. there was a time when they had drained a, a pool nearby and they had like the whole school there. There was that one video where they're all in like the, the bottom of a giant like Olympic sized pool. You remember that? I would need to watch that. Um, and what we were talking about, though, was as nice as it is to skate in a bigger place, we were talking about the benefits of skating in that smaller space that they have, that little, I call it like a little dojo. It looks like a little dojo that they have, like, or something. Mm -hmm. where it they is. They, they call it the dojo. Yeah, okay, yeah. Free so, skate um, dojo. Yeah, so, like, that's what we were talking about is how they they really gain the skill set in a smaller environment like that. And then they can go outside where it's a lot, a lot more room, and then they can just bang out these tricks that they learned and practiced and mastered in some cases like just out on the street or implement them into some sort of a street style just outside of the dojo so cool to see yeah that's all right cool. um five people in here how can we circle this back to cross training on free skates Ooh, one thing i am curious about is like well, I don't have a ton of experience within like other sports that aren't like sideways. So I wonder how they would improve like uh, in terms of like muscle development for other sports, like possibly ankle motions for like soccer or like footwork, mm. footwork for like basketball. I know it's kind of minor, but like I wonder if anyone has that kind of experience where they're like, yeah, my ankle is stronger and I'm not likely to twist it when I go up for dunks or like. I, I, I just I'd imagine there's so many different examples of yeah. how there's small implementations or uh, ways that they could actually improve on sports that you never would have imagined free skating would 
uh, cross train for or like really. Yeah, I would imagine there's a correlation between anything involving footwork, like basketball, soccer, dancing of any kind. Dancing, yeah. Um, you're, you're doing a lot of funky things with jiu-jitsu. your feet when you free skate. Jujitsu. You guys got jujitsu. Yeah, that's something we can talk about. We sponsor a very, I would say, prominent figure in the jujitsu. He's he's league. the world champion. Yeah. Of. Jiu-jitsu. Uh, I'm not Jiu-jitsu. sure what weight class and all of that. I'm oh not, yeah, of a certain class. Yeah, certain but, class, certain time period. Uh, he's been he's been there for Yoshida. a while. Barrett Yoshida. I can pull him up. Um, really quick. So he uses them to cross train his legs for uh, jujitsu. I'll just pull up any photo of him. Here, actually, I have a, a good image of him. Oh, you do? Oh, I found yeah. one, too. Mine's better. Yes. yes. There he is. This, is. this is Barrett talking about, um, you know, how he uses JMK free skates. Oh, and that's Aaron Cairo. And there's Aaron Cairo. These things are really bad. They are. <laughs> but um, it's really cool. You can see it here on his lapel. He has our logo. And he just really believes in it. And he's gotten us tickets to come see him. And he really um, has benefited from the sport and wants, he's definitely on board and wants to spread it with um, other uh, jujitsu fighters. And How did that sponsorship awesome. come about? I've always wondered. It says Cube of Cheese. Honestly, I'm not the person to ask about that. John, I feel like, would know most about that. John and Maddie. Um, yeah. I think John, something tells me John has been into the community in some shape, way, or form. Um, maybe just in the form of watching. Um, and somehow mm-hmm. got connected with Barrett. But um, don't know the full details. Did run into a guy that has him for 10 years now. About the free skins. Nice. Bobby. OG Freeliner. But um, as well as Kong, I could pull up a video of Kong. I believe I know his Instagram. What? No way. Hmm. Oh, there it is. He changed his Insta app from Ice Cold Kong to Dr. Kong. Dr. Kong. He has a video of free skating somewhere here. Is there a community but uh, Kong is a former MMA fighter. He's got to be like 350 people. plus pounds. And he has also used the free skates as a method of cross training. He posts a lot on Instagram. I mean, I think the reason why uh, these jujitsu fighters use free skates is because of the like the total workout of your thighs and your legs. You know, Yeah, it's got to build up muscles that... They, it's hard to develop those otherwise mm-hmm. or at all in some cases with free skates because they're so unique just because how free they are like your leg can be in whatever which way direction and it could need to impose a force in whatever which way direction and therefore results in a very balanced and yeah and it's working yeah the individual ankle motion is really working both legs at an extreme level i could see why that really applies to them mm-hmm Oh yeah, when you're when you're fighting jujitsu, you're like getting way down, and you it's like absolute burst, uh, crazy strength. Did you find a video or anything? I'm having issues finding it, but I know I can. Hey, maybe. All right, so a couple th- a couple things here. I'm going to share my screen and show some stuff of Kong. Here we go. Infinity. So there's Kong. Just at a parking lot, cruising. And then if you go onto his Instagram, I just thought it was cool that he has some stuff. Um, relating to JMK on here, if I can find it quick. So if I scroll down here, he's got a couple things with Barrett. So there's a nice photo with Kong in the center there with Barrett on his right. 
And there's another photo down here of Kong. You were very well right shirt. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, awesome. yeah, no, he's pretty stoked too. So that, that's pretty cool to see. Of course, we hooked him up with a, with a shirt. <laughs> but uh, you have a very loud scroll wheel there, Gabe. Oh, oops. <laughs> I got the infinity scroll where it just scrolls forever. What's his Insta? So Kong is... Um, I could share my screen once more. Just instead of spelling it out. On top here. Dr. Kong 06. Jiu -jitsu yeah, actually, actually yeah. you could um, post it in the comments. Let's oh, dope. Yeah, that's something I could do as well. And Barrett's. Let's see. I'll, I'll post Barrett's. Yeah. Sweet. I'm about how rollerblading compared to free skating. And that it works better for ankle joint because free skating plays to the natural ankle hip joint position and flexibility. Yeah. I think that's um, why I can side serve. Side serve. Oh, yeah. No, um, um, yeah. So that takes a lot of opening your hips. And some roller skaters even are like, just don't prefer it because of that. Yeah. I mean, when you're pumping, I think what I was telling James was like, when you're pumping, you're kind of walking. You know, you're literally like moving your legs forward. But you're going this way. Yeah. But you're going sideways. When you're when you're pumping on roller blades, you're not doing anything that's similar to walking. You're like pushing out and it's, you know, it's not that bad it's not like bad for you or anything like that it's just a different motion and like pumping is uh, in my opinion it's much more the direct like function of like i bet someone who like walks up staircases all day long would be a stronger pumper than they would rollerblader hmm that's an interesting observation yeah i was hiking up and down a cliff the other day and my thighs were killing me so oh <laughs> I think it more do the other way though. Like if I if I could if I did the hiking more regularly, that probably you know translate to having more endured endurable uh -huh. legs. I don't and, know. I'm sure it translates. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. I mean, hiking you would have the muscles going up a cliff than say this. There's they they're probably just separate muscles that you could work on building. Yeah. Um, what is the top speed you guys seen flat ground of free skates? Flat ground, that's a good question. During our speed, uh, downhill, I think it's it, not flat ground, but like flat ground would probably be somewhere between 20 and 30, right? Like Maddie going down the boardwalk. I wouldn't put it above 30. No, you would have to be really pumping. However, technically, there is no top speed on free skates. You're always adding to your speed, right? Mm -hmm. like you don't have, to, you don't have mm -hmm. to make contact with the ground in the form yeah. of pushing. Yeah, there is an infinite top speed on free skates because on roller on longboard or skateboard, you're having to make contact with the ground and push off of it. So you yeah. clearly well, have the top speed. Marvin makes a great point here. Am I giving Maddie too much credit? Probably <laughs> more like twenty. If you're going eight, which is the eight, which is the speed limit on the boardwalk, it's you're going decently fast, but you can totally go a lot faster. You can at least double it if you like 16, 16 to twenty. Maddie will tell you he's at least at twenty. I would say I'm. But, almost, I'd say I'm almost at twenty, probably. I I'd see Maddie at like twenty, maybe five. I don't know. At mo, like at a very fast pump because you can really get going. I mean, downhill, I downhill is like a video idea for you guys. To test Wait, what? What did he do downhill? What was his? Is it thirty four? Oh well, okay. So asked about flat ground, but if we're talking about downhill, Maddie hit thirty four. Um, 23 on the ESC, and that is pretty scary. Wait, what? Oh, oh this is this is Marvin. My my ESC, I've clocked 41. So <laughs> get on my level. But I also have like a gnarly road rash from eating it the other day. Don't go 41 on ECs. Well, I didn't fall at 41. I he was wearing that. protective gear. Yes, I was. I've gone 12 on the cheapos, haven't tested on the JMKs. 
what was the max uh, for downhill, though? I'm curious, wasn't that 30 something, 35, 34? Maddie has said 34 going down a hill. Uh, he's getting a little wobbly, but he, he made it and then he slowed down. Well, so, okay, so like free skates were invented by downhill longboarders to come up with a, a, a downhill transportation, like a, a wheel device that doesn't get there speed wobbles. Speed wobbles. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I've, done, I've done plenty of hill bombs and I've probably, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to say match 34 or anything, but I've gone really fast to where I've, realize you do not get speed wobbles it's you don't yeah. really have that if you do experience. get speed wobbles it's from your legs so yeah, if if you're you know if you're inexperienced um and you're going really really fast your legs can sometimes be like overcompensating and then wobbling yeah, but being, for the, if you're strong and i was and, gonna say being a snowboarder for 15 years i've bombed like mountains before like going yeah. like 50 or or okay maybe not 50 maybe like 35 100 percent, maybe 40 like actually dangerous speed so yeah. like my legs can really handle that speed and the free skates do not give out like if you know how to control them mm -hmm. you can bomb hills pretty fast so it's, oh yeah it's not as frightening as you might think but maddie has some uh some kahunas doing this yeah so you're doing... looking you're looking at right there i mean he's hitting 34 and if you look on the leading up to it, the legs do start to wobble a little bit just from, um, I think. Yeah, the back, the back was yeah. doing very slight. But uh, slowed up, slowed, slowed down on the way up the hill. And uh, of course, I remember, a helmet. I remember forcing him to wear a helmet for that one. <laughs> um, but but um, so they were invented to eliminate speed wobbles because um, the speed wobbles on a longboard originate from the bushings in the truck mechanism um so eliminating the truck eliminated that issue it's basically the speed wobbles are really dependent on the strength of your legs and your ankles mm -hmm. yeah yeah bending knees. so if you have weak legs and yes your legs are going to start wobbling from the speed and they're going to act like those bushings on a board that yeah. are that are giving out um so you want strong legs and if you've been free skating for a while you probably have strong legs yeah, it's a fun fact, Cuba Cheese. The evolution went uh, longboard and then inline skateboard, like that one that we did the video on. We did that YouTube video where we um, put two uh, free free skate trucks on a skateboard like that um, and then cut the deck off. There's no reason to have uh, one deck. James didn't know it either. Cool. I'm glad we could teach you guys a fun fact. <laughs> now you know. And they probably used... Um... Jeff, they probably used, uh, you know, those circular discs that longboarders use to no. actually uh, make contact with the ground. And you never seen like uh, oh, on the turns. on the gloves. Yeah, like front side turns and back side turns. I'm sure. I, I believe I've seen videos of them like doing like pretty hardcore like front side turn while hands are pl planted, going like ten miles, like fifteen miles an hour, however fast, faster even in some cases. I'm sure. Oh, what up, Zach? <laughs> Dang it, Zach. You missed the whole thing, man. You were sleeping. He's finally here. He or, spent no, he's past, he spent the past 58 minutes making his coffee. Zach, are you okay, man? Are you swimming right now? Or are I heard really? there is more flooding. Or maybe it's in, uh, oh, in flooding another area. area. Yeah, true. Yeah. Do let us know. Do let us know. Um, all right. Well, I think we've covered most things as far as cross training. I think we covered everything. I think we covered basically everything. Um, while we wait to hear if Zach is alive. Um, <laughs> well, he, well, what we know at the moment is that he was alive at 358. We can like end with that whole bridge because people are thinking about it. Uh, with. Yeah, well, this goes, we can go this, there's two sides to the coin here. Hopefully, you know, some of the information in this video has inspired you to use your skill set from free skating and apply them elsewhere in your life, be it, you know, general balance, another sport, trying a new sport that it might apply to, or the other way around. If you're like really into snowboarding, really into this other thing, and you're like, yeah, maybe I do have these skills, maybe they would apply. Um, I think they totally would. Like, a good chance you'll really like free skating yeah so, so it, goes, it goes vice versa for sure 
they go hand in hand, helping each other. Um, Jeff, do you have, do you have anything to add? No, um, we will. You know, circle back offline with Zach to make sure that he's okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And well, thank you guys all for watching our latest broadcast. And, and um, we are coming up on exactly one hour. We're gonna end it exactly one hour. Oh all wow! Right. How exciting. Yeah, pretty exciting. <laughs> All right. See you guys in episode 17. New episodes every week, Tuesday, 3 p.m. PSD, unless otherwise mentioned. Bye. Bye. Oh, you missed it. <laughs> oh, no. Wait. Oh, <laughs> Haha. No. Went to get a, a copy. Million other ended things. up doing a million other things. I told you it was the copy. It took yeah. him an hour. Later, James. Later, Zach. Glad you're alive. Right. Next time, Zach. We'll have to bring you on as well as other guys in here. All right. See you later.